Hello and welcome to the Joinder League Season 3 here on Hefwood TV 2, I believe. Um, so we are going to have some more Dota coming on for you. This is going to be a best of two series between No Earth Spirit and The House is Down. I'm going to be your caster, Grandis V, throughout the evening. And, well, I believe it is only uh, this one series that we will be casting. Unfortunately, um, Twitch is not loading for me on my page, so I have no idea whether or not... Um, this is actually going out live, which is really a pain uh, for me. So hopefully this is reaching you, um, as I did have quite a few viewers to go. sitting around in the lobby. But for now, it's not loading for me, so it's not looking too great. Uh, but as for both of these teams, it should be a fairly entertaining game. Um, I don't know, we'll have to see if um, No Earth Spirit and The House is Down are going to be up for the... Uh, test here is they're going to be playing up against each other. The last time that they faced, they went one for one, and it was kind of a one-two punch. Both teams uh, came out with something very strong and were able to end up taking out the win. This is very concerning for me because I can't see my stream preview at all. And, well, looks like Twitch is going to eventually load up for me, so hopefully I'll be able to get it back up before too long. So if this is um, not going live, I feel sorry for you, but there's very little I can do. The in-game ticket should be working properly, uh, so I hope to see you there. Either way, as we jump into this draft coming out from both teams, the first bands are looking fairly standard. Faces Void, Death Prophet, banned up by No Earth Spirit, and Walt Lycanthrope like Razor taken by the houses down. This will leave a lot of premier supports still left in the pool. Scarth made Shadow Shaman and Earthshaker, and Walt Earthshaker will be picked up by the houses down. Tight under Doom, very fast opener after waiting their sweet time for the first pick, but Tight under Doom going to be the Quick follow-up coming out from No Earth Spirit. A lot of team fight coming out from these two. If they lose team fights with the Tide Hunter Doom, something is going terribly wrong, especially if their early lanes don't work out. This Doom is probably not going to be going towards the off lanes. We'll have the Tide Hunter taking up that position. So more than likely, we're going to be seeing an off lane or rather safe lane farming Doom. And yeah, Twitch continues to not decide to load for me. Let me check if my internet's working properly. It looks like I'm not dropping any frames. And that OBS is going through properly. So it's just my connection to Twitch. Honestly, I'd love to see anything. Let me see if I can even get up the chat to make sure that everything's working properly. And, well, if I ever do get into the chat, which it looks like I will, crossing my fingers, hoping to see Kappas, if you could just spam to your heart's content so that I know something's going on. Um, no, j just tell me that the stream is live. For now, it's not connecting to Twitch, so let me check if the Twitch servers are having any issues in my area. Um, honestly, I have no idea. It could just be my luck that in the end I'm going to get DDoSed, and for now, oh dear lordy, well, all of the Twitch servers are offline, so hopefully if you are inside this game, we will be able to continue watching, and well, for the sake of the VODs as well as for... Uh, the people watching on the Dota TV ticket, I'll continue uh, casting this game, despite not knowing if my stream is actually going live to anybody. Um, so even though I can't see your beautiful chat, and I can't see the stream preview, I hope you're still in there, as, well, we had at least 100 viewers waiting for this Best of Two series. The next bands are coming out in droves, as Rubik banned out by No Earth Spirit. No big surprises there, as Rubik would be really solid up against the Tide Hunter Doom. If you can get your hands on either of those two ultimates, it's going to be wonderful for the Rubik, and should be able to turn some pretty crazy team fights. And although it's fun to watch a Rubik, definitely an understandable band coming out from them. The next bands from the house is down, is the Brewmaster and Enigma, and, well, that's going to leave the Shadow Shaman ignored throughout this pool and oh, actually viper the first pickup from no earth spirit a very tanky front line coming up with these two tight hunter naturally tanky as is the viper with the kraken shell as well as corrosive skin respectively as their passives and well doom is going to be building tanking with scorched earth and generally pretty good stats with the exception of his armor early on i don't know these three heroes running at you is not a very Friendly sight to be dealing with by any means. As far as the house is down, they'll go ahead and pick themselves up the Shadow Shaman. No surprises there. As Shadow Shaman and Earthshaker, one of the premier supporting duos. Uh, setting up with the Fissure coming out from the Earthshaker and then follow up with the Shackles into the Sunstrike coming out from the Invoker. It's a lot of damage that they can get around fairly globally if they roam effectively. Uh, Invoker is also going to offer them quite a bit of pushing power along with the Shadow Shaman's Serpent Wards. Uh, so between four Spirits and Serpent Wards... The houses down are going to be looking good for converting their teamfight wins into tower pushes. But up against the lineup from No Earth Spirit, getting those teamfight wins is going to be a bit of a trouble for them. This invoker um, might end up just uh, split pushing for the majority of the game and 
sits in the lane with his Necronomicon as well as Forge Spirits, putting as much pressure as he can. Uh, while no Air Spirit to 5 manning up, their pickoff potential is okay, especially if the Doom gets himself a Blink Dagger. Um, but yeah, it's still yet to be seen. What's actually going to happen in this draft is, well, for the next couple of picks, both teams are going to take their sweet time. And throughout this game, I'm going to try to get back into Twitch, so there is going to be a little bit of disconnect here as I'm trying to um, get the stream on live, because that's really my top priority. Twitch is loading now properly, so let's see if it actually gives any video. For now, we are in the dashboard. And it looks like Twitch is back up, so potentially a little bit of server hiccup, as no Earth Spirit picked themselves up to Venomancer. Venomancer pick is going to be wonderful for them to go through, and... Dyer's ban. It's, I don't know, going to give them a lot of lane pressure. A Viper Venomancer lane is very nasty to deal with, although I'd expect this Venomancer to be laning up with the Doom. So, for now... Ten seconds to go. Five seconds. We are going to go into the next pick. For the houses down, it is going to be a Centaur Warner. It gives them a lot of global ganking presence with the Invoker, as well as a pretty solid Blink Initiator on top of that. And, well, also going to be very useful through the Earthshaker and Shadow Shaman to get in range. Both heroes would like to have Blink Daggers of their own, but the Centaur Ultimate can kind of fill the void that's going to be left by the Blink Daggers that won't be in their inventories for quite some time until later on in this game, when they're able to pick up that extra bit of farm. Um, so yeah, definitely can see this pick working out for them. The houses down have a pretty good all-around lineup, but then again, so do no Earth Spirit. A lot of mid-game fighting potential, as soon as the Blink Daggers and Mechanisms come out from both sides, we're probably going to look for a fairly clashy style coming out from both teams. The Invoker is going to be the biggest exception to this, is if he does go for the Hand of Midas and Exhort build, which is pretty par, um... He won't be joining entirely in the fights, although he'll still commit some pretty decent damage with the Sunstrike supports. Reserve time. Yep, so for now, back into the game, and it looks like Twitch is back up completely, so... Thanks for sticking with me, as the last pickup for No Earth Spirit is a Templar Assassin. Now, this is incredibly greedy coming out for them. This is going to mean that presumably we're going to have a Jungle Doom from No Earth Spirit, and... I don't know, this Templar Assassin pick could completely fall flat on its face, although Invoker in lane is going to do pretty well, and as long as the Earthshaker and Shadow Shaman are roaming around the map, I think that No Earth Spirit definitely can get punished for going for these lanes. Uh, the Doom Jungle is definitely something that can work, um, but with an Earthshaker Shadow Shaman, one of the better roaming support duos, it's going to be very scary to do so. Um, all five of their heroes do scale incredibly well with farm, even Venomancer to a certain extent if he's able to get the Aghanim Scepter. A uh, mobility item like Four Staff or Blink would be wonderful for him as well. Everybody's going to be happy on No Earth Spirit. If they're able to get off to a good start, No Earth Spirit are going to be looking fine. It's going to be a lot about that first 10-15 minutes, however, for them, as that's when the houses down are going to have a bit of an advantage, with the exception of the Center Warner that's going to get his butt whooped in lane, presumably by the Viper. Even if he's 1v1 versus the Tide, he's not going to have a fun time. I don't think there's a lane that Center Warner could win, with the exception being Doom 1v1, which I don't think is going to be the matchup. It looks like Centaur is going to be thrown to the fishes, and, well, the fishes this time are going to be a Viper and Venomancer, or maybe the big fish himself in the form of the Tide. Well, the house is down, potentially thrown for a loop by this Templar Assassin pick, but they'll wait for their safe lane farmer, presumably, although a mid-hero definitely could work out for them. Uh, the Weaver Band coming out from No Earth Spirit is kind of peculiar, but then again, it's not. Doom, good against the Weaver, but if he had the Lincoln Sphere, he had very little of the fear, and oh, buddy, the house is down, go for a Meepo here. I think this is perfectly fine. Meepo could completely explode out of control. Uh, given the draft coming out from both teams, this Meepo... Doesn't have a whole lot to fear. The Ravage and the Doom is going to be problematic for him, as well as the Templar Assassin. So now that I think about it, this Meepo is going to have a pretty hard time. Uh, but either way, um, always pretty jazzed to see a Meepo pick, and I'd really love to see this work out. Uh, the solo offlane Tidehunter can put some pressure on the Meepo, but if the Earthshaker and Shadow Shaman are babysitting him for the early stages, and until he gets his level 3, I think Meepo is going to be just fine then. And with the double poofs as well as double Meepos, he can do decently up against the Tide, although Tide's laning experience should be pretty solid. I don't know, it's going to be a very interesting game to say the least. Five seconds to go. 
five seconds. Well, um, so now that that's done, I'm not going to really be checking out the chat all that much. If there are any technical issues, I might glance over towards it uh, once or twice. But in the end, we are going to start off with the traditional pause of the Join Dota League Season 3. And that'll give me time to introduce our lineup. So Vestia is playing on the Earthshaker. Boogaroo playing on the Shadow Shaman. Laposa on the Invoker. Meepo going to be played by Jubilu. And, well, here is the Meepo that... I've been hearing quite a lot about, although I haven't seen him in action. The last player from uh, THC is going to be Yuka, playing on that Centaur War Runner. And while Centaur War Runner with the Meepo is definitely a combo that can work out, getting in range for those nets can be devastating. And while on the side of Banner of Spirit, not to be outdone, as they are going to have Fan of Soyan playing in the Doom Hisoka, playing on the Templar Assassin Glacius on the Venomancer, Alex Z on the Viper, which will leave A Love on the Tide Hunter. And well, as soon as I introduce both of the teams, we are going to have the G's to come out from both moments. No, Ahsoka needs a second, so. Uh, you're going to be sitting here listening to my beautiful voice for a couple more seconds. Yeah, unfortunate. I absolutely hate uh, these early pauses when I'm a solo caster. Is there's very little else to talk about. The lanes are presumably going to be pretty vanilla coming out from both teams. Um, or at least as expected during the draft. We're probably going to be seeing an Invoker mid with an Ult House from first. That's kind of expected. Jubilee probably going towards the safe lane, even though he hasn't picked up any items. As it would kind of be weird to see. A solo offlane Meepo. They could go aggressive, but then again, Meepo needs his experience, and the supports would be absolutely hogged of that experience once Meepo got the uh, extra levels and extra Meepos in his arsenal. Um, the so called dubbed civilian Central Warner makes another appearance here as his axe is towards his left. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wonderful. As Viper gets back into the game, will alleviate some of the pressure here to keep you all entertained. Um, I'd love to just have a whole wonderful game to talk about. Yeah, that Meepo pick kind of caught me off guard. Um, their single target is pretty light with the exception of the Doom and the Viper Strike and Viper. Um, but Templar Assassin definitely can put a lot of hurt onto that Meepo. And if his micro is not on point and his positioning immaculate, THG might find themselves falling behind fairly quickly. Um, I don't know. I, I think really the heroes that need to have their game impact felt in the early portions are going to be Vesterus and Buguru on that supporting duo for THD. They need to make sure that this Meepo has a good time and that the Centaur Warner doesn't get completely destroyed in lane. Although if he goes for a point in return, that's definitely an option. As if you're up against a Viper and have the return proccing corrosive skin the entire time is just an absolute pain for the Centaur to deal with. It's going to be guaranteed, oh, how large of a slow. It's going to be 25% as well as the constant damage coming out as well. Yeah, you just can't do that up against a Viper. I think delaying the point is good, and maybe you just save it for a situation where it's going to be useful for you. Um, but I think just investing more into the hoof stump and double edge is a better bet. Meepo pauses the game as we get yet another delay, and... Oh, get your stuff together for a little bit longer. Internet in South America just seems to be a little bit off. As Meepo is actually going to be taking up that mid lane. It's definitely something that THD can do. The mid matchup is presumably going to be Meepo up against the Templar Assassin. One that you don't see very often. Uh, but if Meepo gets up an early point to Geo Strike as well as the two Meepos, he can rip through the refra refraction pretty well and then has a decent amount of burst damage. For the TA, I'd actually say that Meepo's a little bit favored, although he's going to eat a heck of a lot of frass from Templar Assassin. But with two tangos, a salve stout, as well as presumably a bottle, for himself, I think he'll be just fine and might even be able to come a little bit ahead. And I definitely think that they can get away with leaving this Meepo solo versus Templar Assassin, because a solo Venomancer isn't the scariest... Um, Person of Roman definitely could get a kill in the Meepo, for sure. Um, but if they do have uh, any ward vision up in top, Glacius' rotation should not go unnoticed by any stretch of the imagination. And Fan of Soyan not really going to be able to do much as far as getting those kills early on as Doom. Early, he might have a net or a center war stomp to contribute, but he's not able to get in range very effectively, and his mana pool is abysmal. Um, yeah, just can't support those spells coming out from the neutral groups very effectively. Invoker is going to be farming up the bottom lane. Goes for boots first. He actually sells an old talisman, which is why I anticipated him going towards mid. Uh, but Meepo deciding that he wants the uh, level priority in the mid lane. And also a mid Meepo, if you're able to get those early levels up to get the third Meepo, you can start roaming around fairly effectively while still CSing in lane. Um, so very little is lost by the Meepo, unless he ends up killing one of his Meepo clones. Uh, still haven't come up with a, an appropriate name for the Meepo clones. I'm... 
Honestly, not sure. It's Glacia. It's going to give it the G, and, well, I'm hoping for no more pauses. Although, this is South American Dota, and I can't really guarantee that, as internet issues are a big one. For now, we're just going to take a look at the poses. We have a big question mark being drawn on the map, and another one also going to be planted there by the Doom. Fan of Soyan, not exactly sure what he's on about, but in the end... seconds to go. Well, there I go again. But... They will go in their five-man rotation and find nobody, securing control over their defensive jungle, which is going to be important to make sure that Doom doesn't get his camps blocked. Because if they block the two large camps, that could spell a lot of issue for Phantom Soy in here. He starts out with South Shield as well as some Tangos and an Observe Ward. Not a lot of... Or he's hanging on to quite a bit of gold on top of that. Not sure exactly where he's going to go with his build. Um, I don't know. If you're just going to be straight up, straight up jungling, potentially a Qualling Blade would be beneficial as the extra damage for creeps would allow you to clear him out earlier, but if he is going to be building his mechanism, maybe some sticks, I don't know, it's weird to see hanging on to 250 gold if you're not going to get the boots first. Uh, but Illusion Rune is going to be spotted out by Fan of Soyan, he'll pick that one up for himself, and probably just going to be putting this to scouting purposes, as well as potentially blocking a couple of camps. For now, we have um, the Earthshaker dropping a block on top to delay the creeps and give Yuka some pretty good guaranteed experience under tower. He is going to be up against, quite possibly, the worst darn lane in the entirety of Dodo against Viper and Venomancer. So much dot damage and so much Ras for the Centaur. I don't think he's going to be able to get much except for experience out of this lane. He gets one deny onto the Viper, but I don't think that's going to happen anymore, and if he's... Going to stand forward, he's just going to be in a bit of trouble as well. The lanes are actually not going to be what I thought they would be. It was Tidehunter is going to be taking up the support position. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of it. I would have liked the jungle Doom better. Um, Doom isn't going to be able to get much out of the bottom lane, and for now... Yeah, he hasn't even found his level 2 yet. Ven of Soyan. I think he'd get more just straight up jungling, and Tidehunter would get a lot out of the off lane. For now, he's going to get shackled up. Uh, but no follow-up disables being thrown out. They have a Fissure if they want to go for this, but I think Fan of Soyan's going to be fine. He's looking for the block. Is he going to be able to get it? Oh, he's trying to juice the Sunstrike, and he's not going to be blocked out by the Fissure. There you go. And Fan of Soyan is going to be right-clicked down. No, the Fissure block actually didn't come through. That uh, different animation coming out from the totem of the Earthshaker makes it a little bit difficult to see. But in the end, Fan of Soyan going to be able to worm his way past the Fissure block and survive another day. Another Sunstrike from the Invoker will just take too long and wouldn't be enough damage on the... Doom, I don't think. It would be pretty close. Well, actually, with level 2 Exhort, it would be. Yeah, Meepo and Mia taking a lot of harass from the Templar Assassin, and at the early stages, is trading decently well. Um, still waiting for that next Meepo, as Jubilee is going to summon him, and now the right-clicking is going to get a little bit easier in lane. He doesn't have a point in Geo Strike just yet, um, but once he does, Ahsoka is not going to be able to rely on the defensive refraction uh, that much, and the double poofs are going to sting quite a bit. Jubilee does have a very weak Meepo in lane, but with a couple of Tangos, that's nothing that can't be solved. As well as a regeneration rune, going to be lovingly sat on by the Earthshaker to make sure that his Jubilee buddy is going to be in fit fighting shape and potentially going to find a gank on bottom lane as a Doom. If he gets caught out by a net, easy setup for the Sunstrike because the uh, net duration is 2 seconds and the Sunstrike delay is 1.6, you really can't ask for a better setup there. Now that the Meepo has his two Meepos, I'd like to see him, or I expect to see him, um, not winning this lane, but at the very least trading evenly as they rotate in the Tidehunter with the Gush, and as well as the Poof, he's going to go to the secondary Meepo. The Venomancer is there, one right click is all they need, and they get the Courier on top of it. That's the boots from the Meepo in First Blood, going the way of Banner Spirit, a huge disaster for the Meepo. It was good micro coming out from them, with the exception of the Courier there. I think he was dead no matter what, he was gushed up and just in a very compromising position. Wow, yeah, that's... Pretty damning for this Meepo. Meepo's going to have his teleport scroll, but he's not going to have his boots. Meepo is a hero that's okay from playing from behind, and in most laning situations, he is going to be doing so. But not this behind. As Meepo actually gets killed on the Templar Assassin, the double poof, poof with the Sun Strike on top. I did not expect that kill to happen, but oh, had enough kill, uh, points into that poof to get the damage off his up top. They find the center. He's juking through trees with some tangos. And, well, he's going to be slowed up by the Gush. That's going to be it. As up on top, another rotation going to fail. And Meepo striking back in a big way. I didn't think he'd be able to do so. Um, but he will. <laughs> Jublu never forget this Meepo. Um, for now, he's going to go ahead and back off into the jungle and stack up. Which is one of the big benefits of having a Radiant Meepo. You can send one of your clones while your other one is in lane to get those stacks off. And accelerate your farm for quite a bit. So even though his lightning stage went quite disastrously to start out. Giving up first blood as well as a courier kill. Not how you want it to start your game. Guess what's happening. It's not going to look the worst for Jubilu. 
this support tight has made some pretty good work as far as rotations are concerned. Uh, but a love mm, support tight I'm not really feeling it. If he's able to get to level six early, it's wonderful. Um, but other than that. Tidehunter can't do very much without those levels, and he doesn't have a great way to get them until he has enough points into the Anchor Smash as well as the Crack and Chill to farm Ancients. That won't come for quite some time, though, especially with the one point in the gush. For now, THG, you're going to go push down in the bottom tier 1 tower, and with the Doom on the enemy team, there's nothing that Fan of Soying can do for this. Urshaker gets the last hit, and as a support, definitely one that you want to get that extra gold is getting an early Arcane Boots, getting an early Blink on Vestius would be pivotal for THD. Early game is still going in favor of Banner of Spirit, although because their mid lane and their top lane are doing pretty swimmingly. Although the Templar Assassin giving up that kill is going to make it more or less even, and the Viper is not trading that well with the Invoker, I don't know. Um, it, it's still anybody's game at this point. Meepo, he has his boots finished, and... I'm interested to see how Jubilee likes building his Meepos. A lot of people liking the power treads for the extra tank on your Meepos, as well as the extra damage when you're tread switching all of his bottle, as well as his boots finished. Um, but yeah, move back into mid lane. Easy fill up of that bottle, and then the free bottle charge is going to be thrown to the secondary Meepo clone. Absolutely nothing lost uh, by the first Meepo, and now his second Meepo is full of mana. Well played, and that's how you do it with the double poof. He'll clean up this wave, and... Continue on doing Meepo things as he has a couple of stacks that he wants to farm up. He's going to go over to the side camp. It is Centaurs with the double poof as well as a couple of auto attacks with the Geo Strike attack on them. He'll be able to clear this up, although not the quickest. And he sends the other one to get the stack even larger. It's currently a triple stack with double satyrs as well as Wild Wing. But that should be a quad stack here after the pull through. Uh, for now, both kills have been isolated in the mid lane as the offlaners are playing very defensively or just not showing their face in lane at all. This Doom is. Completely fallen back into the jungle, and this is really why I would have liked to see Ban Earth Spirit put that Doom in the jungle. Uh, Tide Hunter, he's been able to get one gank on the Meepo, which is nice, but I think that offlane Tide Hunter would be able to succeed in the same capacity. Venomancer drops in Civil Ward behind the tier 1 tower to keep eyes on this Centaur War, and he has his Tranquil Boots, and it's not going to be the easiest kill. No points in return yet, I like this choice. Coming out from the Centaur, he's going to get Viper Struck, however, he's going to just straight up TP out there. No way to cancel that. Coming out from either of these heroes... Really, the only ways to have the cancel TPs are the Doom spell coming out from the Doom and the Tide Hunter Ultimate. Very expensive spells to cancel TPs with, and Centaur, heads up play is Meepo. Going to have one of his Meepos get pretty low. I think that was just from farming up the stack, but maybe it was the Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin lose and chasing down one of the Meepo clones. Won't do uh, terrible damage, but will force it back to base. It doesn't have a lot of mana to speak of. Power Treads are going to be the choice from the Meepo. I'd expect just rushing straight into the Agamem Scepter this game, as the extra tank is going to be very useful up against the... Ven uh, Viper as well as the Doom. If he gets doomed, usually that's going to be a straight-up kill, but if he is tanking up and gets a couple of stat items early on, that could not be the case. So, it's fairly passive, which I'm not a huge fan of, um, but I'd expect the uh, action to break out at about 15 minutes or so when it comes in full force. We're still waiting on those core items to come up. Viper's getting dangerously close to his mechanism, actually, since he rushed it after the Brown Boots and the Basilius. If you're going to sit in lane, I think going for power treads first or get phase boots first is a better option if you want to go for full lane domination. But we're going to look for him to rotate as the Templar Assassin falls dangerously low to the Meepo. Did you strike eating through the fraction with the central ultimate? Will secure enough damage to get that kill. So Templar Assassin giving up two towards the Meepo, underestimating how Meepo would do up against a TA, and Meepo's caught up admirably and doing very well in this mid lane. I. Yeah, not a matchup you see every day, but it's going to work out for uh, the house is down. And yeah, he has good wave clerk and put a lot of pressure onto the Templar Assassin. And as aforementioned, dot spells are very good up against TA. Is she relies heavily on the refraction for her defensive capabilities. And without that, she has very little. So we have a TP back in the mid lane from the TA. The other heroes really aren't rotating around, with the exception of the Earthshaker is sitting up top. Mm, the heroes up here are not the easiest to kill. The Viper... Not maxed out corros or corrosive skin, but he has the mech, and that'll also make the Tide Hunter decently tanky on top of that. The extra 250 burst deal is pretty crazy, and oh dear. Looks like we're having ping issues, and I don't think I am any exception to that, as I'll check the ping uh, for you guys for now. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> the game is updating, and ping is not looking pretty. It is dying down a little bit. My ping's actually not looking terrible for South... American servers, but the players are not looking too pretty. So lag dodo it is. As well, techies are making a surprise uh, appearance on the week. 
or before that it's supposed to happen. I don't know. That would be probably the biggest troll that Valve could do here, but I don't think they will. It's just going to be hats and hats and hats until probably next Thursday. Um, but either way, that's kind of a decide as we get back into this game. Everybody's pings are fine now as it has died down. And Doom does not have his level 6 sitting at level 5. And actually looks like he's going for an early Vanguard. Phantom Soyan with a Vitality Booster. It's going to give him a nice bolster to his effective HP. Uh, not sure if it's going to be enough for the Meepos. The Templar Assassin dies again. The triple Meepos are just too strong. I thought the Templar Assassin would learn her lesson, but in the end, just staying way too far up in lane. And the net follow-up into the poofs is too much for the TA to deal with. Just not a matchup that she's comfortable in playing. And that's going to be her third death. This Meepo is getting ridiculously huge. Three Meepos already. 2,000 gold. He could go for a Blink Dagger, and I wouldn't be completely opposed to it. Although I think the Agnum Scepter is the safer bet. Centaur as well as Earthshaker have made top their home. Still uh, looking for this tower deny on the tier 1 tower, and it will be secured by the Earthshaker. I don't think the Viper is going to commit for this. Shadow Shaman pauses the game. Uh, uh, oh dear. This is not, not, not great. Not great. <laughs> oh well. Serpa words. Deploy at the tier 2 tower. Actually falling very low since this lane has been left completely abandoned by Banner of Spirit. No big surprises that this is happening, especially since Shadow Shaman has picked up his level 6. It's pretty early level 6 for the um, Shadow Shaman played by Brugaru, but putting it to good use here is the tier 2 tower is going to fall, uh, presumably. There is a glyph available, they'll probably delay this, but they'd need to TP a lot in, and I'm not sure they have the tools to really defend against this. They have the mechanism on the Viper, but they'd have to commit um, pretty much the cores from their other two lanes in order to do so. Yep. Yeah. If THD are able to keep up this pressure, get the towers with the Serp Wards, keep this Meepo on the top of the net worth chart, they're looking pretty good. Uh, as far as Meepo's next items are concerned, I think either go for the Blink now, um, or pick yourself up a Point Booster and the Ogre Club. Some uh, players also like to get the Blade of Alacrity as well as the Ogre Club, um, or even the Staff of Wizardry for the extra mana. But I think just get some stat items uh, for yourself or go for the Blink. Yeah, these pauses are unrelenting, and it always seems that there's something with American Dota. There's just not something that can actually be done about this. Yep, a Rooney. <laughs> well, taking a look at the chat, not really a whole lot going on there. A couple of... Those broken Imgur links with the extra space in there. Let's see what, what this one says. I don't know. If it's terrible, I'm banning you, so... You better hope for your sake that this is good. And it is indeed a majestic cat. Um, although, it is... Wanna win some free CSGO case keys? Oh, sorry, bud. Uh, I think you're gonna hit the um, timeout banner. And we're getting it back into the game. <laughs> Save me. Uh, from... The, the chat as we get back in, and well, Invoker does get the last hit on the tower, pretty much as expected. And Urshaker gets the die up top, wins all around the map coming out from the houses down. And Well, hopefully the lag subsides as the Vanguard completed by the Doom. I'm not sure if this item is really going to have the effect that Phantom Soyan could have if he went for something along the lines of a Blink or a Mechanism. It's going to tank him up for sure. Um... End up against a Meepo, it's nice, but for now, most of that damage is going to come out from the poof of Jubilee. And Jubilee's poof is going to wreck the Doom. Um, as well as the Geo Strike, I don't know. I, I'm just not really feeling this Vanguard pickup from Phantom Soyan. It's a good timing, and this is where you'd want to see a Vanguard if you want a Vanguard at all. Uh, but if he's going to farm more for the late game, I'd rather see Hand of Midas. I, I think either Blink or Mech is a better choice, and with Viper picking up the mechanism, I would have liked to see Arcane's Blink for Phantom Soyan a little bit better than the Vanguard. The extra tank is going to be nice. You, you can't really deny it. Um, but whether or not it will be as effective as just a casual vid booster will be seen as they jump in. They're looking for a Sunstrike. Not sure where that Sunstrike was landed. It is on the Venomancer. As they might have gone onto the Doom, but it's actually the kill onto the Venna that happens over by the River Yuka. Securing that one up with a Hoof Stomp double edge. Pretty straightforward for him. Venomancer, not the tankiest of heroes. And in the end, just ripped to shreds by your Center Warner. I thought they were going to make it go on mid, uh, but I was mistaken. Tide Hunter is still waiting on his level 6, as is the Venomancer, level 4 and 5 respectively. Not where you want your sports to be. Uh, Earthshaker, he's okay without his level 6 at this point. He's just a walking fisher until he gets his uh, Blink Dagger online. He has Arcane Boots for his team, which is all fine and dandy. But really, it's it's all about the fisher. So, As the fisher goes on to Phantom Soin, he's an easy shock. Um, but I don't think they're going to be able to kill him. 
they need a little bit more lockdown. If they add the net into the Sunstrike with the boost in from the other Meepas that are currently farming up the jungle, maybe they'd be able to do so. Um, but currently, it's just a double poof to get that little extra gold for the Meepo. And Meepo is exploding in net worth. He actually has all three stack components of the Aghanim Scepter, and he almost has it completed. Meepo farms incredibly fast if you give him the room, and they're giving him the room here as the TP comes in mid. After the Fissure and the Serpent Wards have been committed, the Tier 1 Tower is going to fall. It should be denied here, and it will be by the Doom. Or no, the Viper gets the last hit there, and a little bit more gold denied the way of... The house is down, but then again, they've also denied the majority of Roshan control coming out from Ban Earth Spirit. They have no towers below that line, and really, those are the key ones for keeping control over Roche. Their team is pretty good at taking it with Venomancer as well as Tempor Assassin. They definitely could go for it. Um, but yeah, losing those towers is going to make it more difficult. They'll probably have to smoke or win a fight pretty convincingly before. For now, it is just going to be a slow siege onto this tier 1 tower, and will THD get enough out of the other sides of the map? Yuka is pushing out top, saving up for his point dagger. Should be able to get the tier 1 towers. No, they jump in with Jubilee. He's going to get the poof damage. And now his Soka going to be ripped to shreds. Double kill for the Meepo as the Titan Dunder as well as Temple Assassin going to fall fate to the four Meepos with the Aghanim Scepter just getting caught out completely off guard. Tier 1 tower is not going to be looking too healthy, but with the Phantom Answer wards uh, down the ground, actually, Centaur taking a lot of damage just from a double edge um, on himself um, yeah Jubilee this is what you want your Meepo games to look like Aghanim Scepter 12 minutes halfway towards your own blink dagger and I think he's going to completely take over this game I really do I'm not sure there's much the banner of spirit are going to be able to do about this Meepo. He's walking some of his Chromes past the Venomance Rewards. They know this is going on. The Doom is inbound. He has his ultimate. Potentially looking for the Meepo. He's going to poof some of his clones in order to just keep on farming up. And in these little two-man squads, that's how it's going to be for Jubilee. Um, at this point in the game, it's just farm the entire map. Kind of akin to what you'd see from a Naga Siren, although Meepo is a lot more fun to watch. Poofing around the map and just blowing up heroes is a lot more fun than just a farm fest. Um, he should be getting pretty active as soon as he catches out one of these heroes alone. If it's the Venomancer... One poof combo kills him straight up. Um, Masoka, he might have to save some of the poofs in. Just poof in like one of the alternate Meepos and Geostriker a couple of times. And then he can poof in the rest to get that burst damage onto the Templar Assassin. And well for now, Jubilee going to stow some of his Meepos, two of those clones, over towards the left hand side. Poofing them towards mid No, it's just gonna keep them in reserve. Um, something that Meepo players generally like to do if you're not wanting to focus entirely on all of them, but they're going to poof up top, and with the Centaur in this rune, as well as the Blink, oh, Ahsoka, he's gonna die here, the stop is not gonna come out, will they be able to chase him down, the net's going to miss, the boosts are going to break through refraction, but now he's netted in place, they don't need detection here, as the damage is going to be too much, and, well, it's unfortunate that the Temporal Assassin wasn't able to meld, but I think just the poofs coming out would have been enough to kill her at the end of the day. Not gonna save you there, and this Meepo, he's gonna have a 14 minute Blink Dagger Aghanims. Uh, Jubilu is... Rock in the house. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is a pleasure to watch. We have a Fissure and Mid on the Phantom Soin as well as A-Love. We'll delay the creeps a little bit longer. The Tier 1 tower not looking too healthy. And for now, that's Banner Earth Spirits jumping. No, Yuka going to jump in with all of the Meepos, but they're going to counter shit with the Time Tractor. There's a Sun Strike. It's not going to land on much of anything. Stu goes away. Jubilee is not splitting away that Meepo. The x -Sun also going to come out onto A-Love. It looks like Jubilee is going to lose his first Meepo here as he's going to get burned down by the Doom as well as the Viper. Doom ends the spree and well, two for one. Um, very ill advised jump in from the the Centaur and Meepo, I feel. Um, jumping into a Titan to Ravage as well as Doom is not advised, but in the meantime, their base is under full breach! What the heck? With the Serpa Wards as well as the Invoker, they'll be able to get that one. The Templar Assassin might be able to get Bukuru, but she'd be diving under Serpa Wards, and she just can't do that. <laughs> I don't know what this game is. <laughs> Two or three towers down, and... Win for the houses down? I don't know. They broke the base here at 15 minutes in, and I wasn't even watching that portion of the map. The range barracks not looking too healthy either. <laughs> I don't know. That's a blink dagger on your Shadow Shaman as well as on your Earth Shaker. The houses down have four blinks on their team. And honestly, if I'm the Invoker, I, I want to join the blink party. I, I want to get my own dagger to jump in there and drop some sick combos. But for now, Invoker has his level 10 as well as his double Forge Spirits and Necronomicon 3 as soon as he decides to deliver that out to himself. I think the houses down can just go for the tier 2 towers very systematically. If they have to fight, they will, but... For the next 74 seconds, they're not going to have a Ravage. Sure, 20 seconds is going to be decent enough for Doom to get his ultimate up. He doesn't have the Blink Dagger, however, and a Doom on your Meepo, if you peel that Meepo away from the other ones, I think the Meepo is going to be just fine with the Aghanim Scepter as well as the Power Treads. He should be able to tank through that, especially with his extra magic resist. 
Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't really know what to make of that. I just haven't seen that happen. Banner of Spirit were committed way too far into the mid lane, and Shadow Shaman and Invoker just made bot their home. That's that that was their home. They just stayed there. They kept on pushing it out, and they kind of did what a bird mother would. Do you leave them alone, and they take towers. So Laposa as well as uh, Burguru making good uses of their time, and Burguru still farming down on bottom. Not exactly sure why. I think uh, him running around up top with the rest of the heroes would be a little bit more beneficial. Probably going to do so after he clears up this creep wave and makes sure that the lane equilibrium is in their favor. Titan to Ravage coming off the cooldown in 15 seconds. This next engagement could be a big one. Um, it'll be all about whether or not the houses down are able to burst down the targets first, or if they're able to get a pick off. That could be all moot as well. They smoke up with three of their heroes and potentially looking for Ahsoka. Although they are backing off, that might have been spotted by this observer ward here. I think there were people in bed on that smoke, but instead they're going to find out the Viper. And now the Sunstrike coming through on Alexei and the poofs in from Jubilee blows up the Viper. And now this is the opening that THG needed. They're going to have four Meepos up in top, and well, for now. It is going to be Invoker that's getting wrapped around in mid, and Loposa is spotted out by the trap. Loposa don't think he's going anywhere. He's going to spawn the Four Spirits, gets doomed up, can't use the Necro Book. In the meantime, the Tier 2 tower up on top is probably going to fall to the Meepo, but they'll get a well-needed pickoff in the middle lane as well. They're going to TP the Venomancer back, but I think they've just reserved that that tower's going to go down, and in the end, Rax falls to the Shadow Shaman. They're just getting peeled apart by the houses down. Uh, their map control is... Wonderful as we have some poofs coming out from the Meepo just to uh, chase them up to the front one that was blinking away. Range barracks, usually not the biggest deal. Ugh, I don't know, Tide Hunter, you're getting pretty darn low here. If Invoker had a buyback, that could be a buyback Sunstrike. And, well, with 13 seconds, A-Love is going to feel safe enough. If the Invoker bought back, that would be like an oh crap moment. But he has his Blink Dagger, so even if he died, wouldn't be the biggest deal. Yeah, I was expecting that Sunstrike, but yeah, forgot that Invoker got picked off there for a second. This game is completely scrambling my brains. Jublu, another 2,700 gold on top of his Blink Aghanims at 18 minutes. Uh, just exactly what you expect to come out from me, but was farming like an absolute madman, and also KDA looking pretty sharp as well. Um, 7, 2, and 1, can't really ask for much more from your Meepo, um, especially after getting killed in lane once. Yeah, Meepo's next item, I have no idea what it's going to be. I'd like to see just some raw tank, maybe pick up a Reaver before finishing up a full next item. I think the extra stats that it would provide... Um, would help him quite a bit. Maybe if he wants to go that route, he'll go for the Scotty. For now, it is going to be Boots of Travel for the Meepo, and just straight up Swift Push coming after them. Banner Spirit currently inside the Roshan pit. They don't have the fastest Rosh, although the metal is going to help Fisher thrown out from Vestius. He has the Blink Echo Slam, but it's cancelled by the Corrosive Skin inside the pit. Now chased down by the Scorched Earth of the Doom. He's not going to right-click him, and actually the Blink Dagger is going to come back off shortly. The Roshan falling to about half, but no, Jubilee is going to jump in the Hosoka. He's going to be caught up by the Ravage on all of his people, with the exception of one now with the Doom Ultimate on one of them. I don't think he's getting out there. There's going to be a nice Echo Slam coming out from the um, Earth Shaker. Follow-up Fisher onto Alex D, but they lost their Meepo. He's just committing so hard into the the Ravage and Doom. I don't think he can do so as Earthshaker just kind of gives up on life as it gets blasted down by Alex as well as the Doom. And now Glazy is caught in a very sticky situation with the Ice Path. Lobos are just going to straight up TP out. They have the level to cancel it, however. And now he's in a bit of a pickle out. No, they have the Surf Wards down on the ground. The Shackles up on the Alex. He would jump in from Yuka as well as the Double Edge. You're going to be able to get that kill, however, with the Taiduken Blast coming out from Fan of Soy. And yet again, he'll get the kill onto the Centaur for jumping in. So punishing that aggressive move. And what a bloody fight as the end trade is probably going to be three for four in the favor of the houses down, although Laposa not looking too hot up against those Serpent Words, but without, er, Plague Words, and actually, Melee Barracks fell in the entirety of that. Huge win for the houses down. I, this is such an awkward game. Usually you don't see split push battles like this at of this magnitude until much later, but at 20 minutes in, we're one racks down in the favor of the houses down without a full 5 on 5 engagement. And Meepo kills off the Tide Hunter inside the base, and now he's going for Ahsoka. They're TPing back to base with the other uh, Meepos and backing off with oh, that one he's mis microing as he's going for the other ones. He might just fall to the poison damage, poison take damage. It should be enough as he's going to be able to get a kill beforehand. Oh, the score shows it is going to be enough as the killing spree goes this way. Buguru shackling up in a soy, but he's pretty much dead as the Venomancer and Doom are just going to cleave him down. Fissure going to uh, help it at the very end, but such an aggressive play coming up from the Meepo. Um, you can warrant it, and it's definitely not going to throw away the game, um, as they are one racks up at 20 minutes in. I think that's really all that matters. Even if the house is down, their kill scores were flipped, and they were the ones 9 to 16. One racks at this point in the game is pretty damning for Ban Earth Spirit here. They don't have the best tools to deal with it. Their counter push isn't that great. Uh, they have Tidehunter as well as Templar Assassin, probably their best bets as far as that is concerned. With the Shiva's Guard, they'll have a little bit more. Coming up from Phantom Soyan. 
<laughs> I don't even know is in mid. They might decide to go on to Alex D. For now, just going to be zoned out completely by some Forge Spirits. Um, Laposa, they have a lot of damage on them. 83 per Forge Spirit, as well as being decently tanky with four points up in the Quas. Invoker, not going to have the Meteor combo just yet, but is going to pick himself up a four staff for the extra mobility. Definitely think it's a worthy pickup. Um, I'd like to see the next point be putting it uh, into Wex so that he has the Meteor combo with this much Exhort. It's just a little too good to pass up in these team fights. Although they don't have the best AoE control of Centaur, potentially looking for a jump, but the Meepo is going to be doing it onto the Viper and just obliterated. That is going to be the Viper down. They're going to slow up Yuka as well as all of the Meepo clones, but Templar Assassin can't jump into that. The Tide Hunter is waiting in the wake. But <laughs> the Meepo is just too strong to get a hex into mid on the fan of Soyan. They don't have a Meepo. They're going to drop the Ravage onto three heroes here and follow up on Lopozo with the Doom. Now Meepo can just go ham as all of those spells that have been controlling him so well have been dropped. And now the Echo Slime onto three is going to rip to shreds the Tide Hunter. Now Glacius, he's not held down by the net, but his other Meepo is falling low. He's splitting them up very nicely as one more that's not low, but that's going to be a full team wipe in the favor of the houses down. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see a GG. I don't know. It feels so weird to be saying that, but the Iraq's down, and they just lost a convincing team fight that should secure Roshan for the houses down. Although Meepo is forced to go back to base, I would have liked to see him leave one of the Meepos in the pit with, with boots of travel. It doesn't matter. He sends one of them towards mid. I think you just go for Roshan here instead of committing all the way. But GG called out by Fan of Soyan. Ben Earth Spirit have had enough, and in the end, the house is down. I don't think they're going to get their hands on the Meepo next game. That was beautiful coming out from Jubilee. <laughs> That is such a hard game to evaluate. Shadow Shaman as well as Invoker just sat down and bottom, pushed themselves to victory, and they got an early Rax at 20 minutes. You can't ask for more. Meepo was an absolute menace that game. His gold per minute, although not the scariest I've seen, 661 is nothing to shake a stick at, and his game impact was huge. Well, thank you for watching. That's only going to be game one here on Hefwa TV 2. We'll have game two coming up shortly, so don't go anywhere. I've been Grandis V, and hope to see you soon. GG to both teams.